Will we see Coach Q yeah. behind the bench of another team this season? He still has a contract. Yeah. Six million this year, six million next year with the Blackhawks. How does that play out, EJ, if yeah. he wants to coach for another team? Well, it's interesting. I talked to some coaches and I talked to some guys who are in the agent game and uh, they kind of gave me the rundown. He's got, it's reported that he's, that Joel is making $6 million a year for this season and next season. So he's got one more year after this one that's coming up. So what will have to happen is that a team will have to reach out to the Hawks, ask permission to speak to Quenville. If the Hawks decide to grant that permission, which you would think they would do because they're on the hook for a lot of money, then they would have to work out some kind of financial arrangement with Joel Quenville and eventually with the Blackhawks because what happens in these situations is Joel is going to be made whole here in terms of his the financial, uh, what he's got coming to him. That's he, six if million. it's six, he's getting six. Yeah, he's regardless. getting six. Now, the question is, if, let's say, Team X wants to come in and they want to pay Joel Quenville, they can only afford to pay him $4 million, then the Blackhawks would have to agree to pay the other $2 million. And in the end, what happens is the commissioner... Commissioner Bettman kind of brokers this. He's kind of the judge and jury because you can't double dip. You can't go in and get all that money from the Hawks and then go and get another contract from someone else and end up making a lot more. That doesn't usually fly with the commissioner. So, And on the flip side, you can't try to go in and sign and get a contract, let's say, again, from Team X for $1 million and have the Hawks being paying the lion's share. So if a team is interested, and I think there will be a team, they will go to the Hawks. The Hawks will have to grant permission. There will have to be conversations between that club and Quenville. And then they'll have to work out a financial arrangement between Quenville, that club, and then the Blackhawks to make it all work. And in the end, the commissioner will be the guy that decides if those numbers, if that term is right. And just for an example, one uh, example I got today was if a team would pay $4 million, the Hawks would pay 2 That would probably wash with the commissioner. If it's 50-50 or less than that, probably not going to go so that will be the key here and it's a lot of money teams don't pay their coaches there are some teams it's a handful that can pay their coaches right. a lot of money yeah. but most do not and you're, you're an example Barry Trotz won a Stanley Cup last year and the Washington Capitals did not want to pay him on that term and that dollar figure so that's just one example of how teams don't always want to pay their coaches the kind of money that Quenville was getting in Chicago so my, my natural follow-up to that question then would be are there any teams out there that currently might be looking or in the near future looking to replace their coach that have the financial ability and want to spend that kind of money on a coach well I think I think you could identify a handful of teams out there right now that may be especially now that Joel Quinville's come available that may be considering hey uh, this might be a, a great opportunity to seize on you know a guy with an incredible resume and incredible pedigree in terms of his tenure behind an NHL bench uh, I I think it probably depends more on Coach Q at this point. Yeah. Remember, this is a guy, he's pulling down $6 million for That's this right. year. He's going to get paid. He doesn't paid. have to do anything. He doesn't have to do anything to collect that $6 million if he's inactive, not coaching yeah. through the balance of this season. So for him, and to next, me, and I think that's an opportunity for him to kind of sit back, let things kind of percolate where the season is going. Mm -hmm. For me, I think he's looking at what's the best. Exactly. What's the best opportunity for me to land somewhere else with success exactly. you know you're, you're looking at the caliber of the roster and maybe a group that didn't hit the mark they were targeting or capable of for me I'll, I'll pull out an example just out of the clear blue the Minnesota Wild might be that very kind of team but they're not prepared to make a coaching change today if they fall short of the mark maybe don't make the playoffs or or, or finish up early they're a, they're a club with some nice pieces maybe considering a change and that's a summer transaction for Q and the Minnesota Wild. And I as would, an example. As an example. And, you know, the other names that the Detroit Red Wings have come up as a possible down the road. There could yeah. be some changes there. I would say there's another scenario that I found pretty interesting. He could sit there and collect all $6 million the rest of this year and next year and then maybe become the first head coach of the Seattle franchise when they come into the yeah. National Oh, Hockey I didn't think about got, that. I know that he has a relationship with Dave Tippett. I believe they played together in Hartford at, at some point during yeah. their careers. He mates in Hartford. So... Again, there will be a lot of opportunity for Joel Quenville, but the thing for people to remember is that the money that the coaches make, they don't make it in all the markets. There's only a handful, and that would have to be worked out because I would suggest that Joel Quenville isn't going to give away money to come back and coach in the National Hockey League. He doesn't have to do it. No, he doesn't. But as we heard Mark say, he's a very competitive guy. He coach. still loves I, I think he'll be back. I, I think he'll be back. I think so, for the full too. Two years. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't I, foresee that. I think he'll be back at some point, but... It'll have to work fine. And it'll be 
with a team that he wants to coach. That's right. A, and a, like a your team point. that he yeah. yes. got to be a good roster. Yeah. yeah. You know, you want to win. I always joke about this. You want to have success as a coach. Find good players. Yes, that you helps. You have good players. You have a chance. When Joel Quenville had the best players in Chicago, he won three Stanley Cups. Now it's not the roster isn't quite as good. He's not having as much success. So he will be able to pick and choose, and that's the good thing for Joel.